DOC. Hey, Aaron, I have a question for you that's a little bit more technical. This is this oh, is no. why I like you here. Keep me in check, right? Tell me if this doesn't make any sense, right? So, okay. uh, Croson was saying that about, you know, Yamaha, the DSP effects that are, like, notorious for being pretty bad. Okay. Right? So, those are set amount of reverb that they add to everything. Everything on there. What I'm saying that I think, this is just a hypothesis, I think what Oro is doing is it's basing the reverb on the actual recording itself. Drive signal versus the wet signal. So, my example mm -hmm. would be an impulse response. So, you know about convolution, right? Mm -hmm. um, so an impulse response is a mono signal. Not stereo, right? Just a psh, right? Clap. You can record an impulse response in a room, and you can apply that to all the sounds that happen using convolution. Right. Now, why couldn't we do that from a sound in the movie? Although it's not an impulse response, why wouldn't you be able to take a sound, kind of extrapolate the reverb from it? Right. Yeah, and I then, don't know. I mean, you know, so that's what I think that Oro is doing. That's my hypothesis. Yeah. It's just my guess. Yeah, right? I have no but idea that how that's going to work. I know, yeah. like, some of the, like, the Logic 7 and stuff, it was explained to me. I'm not going to try to explain how, I, how it was mm -hmm. explained to me because I don't really remember, to be honest. But I remember that, that essentially, you know, it has to do with phase angles. Like, so the signal coming in, the processor can read the phase angle, and then it also knows where to send stuff to based on that. As opposed to, a like, mono a mono signal. Well, like, so if you take, like, Dolby Pro Logic, it was just, like, rear fill is differential mm -hmm. signal. Like, so, like, L minus R and R minus L. But then, like, the next mm -hmm. step up from that with the uh, Logic 7, I was told, was that it can detect the actual phase angle of the signal coming in. So, instead of it just being R minus L or L minus R, it actually can better figure out where that mm -hmm. should be placed in the sound stage based on the signal itself. Mm -hmm. So, uh, yeah, I don't think it's, like, a kind of like what you were talking about, like, an enhancement DSP feature where it's a... Uh, you know, you push this button, it's going to do it to everything, you know, like the, yeah, like I the voice of Chana. The, the, the point I'm trying to make, though, is if it's a mono signal, there's there's nothing to look at. I mean, there's a single mono signal, right? Would you be able mm -hmm. to extract extrapolate from that certain things? I think you can. Yeah, I don't see why not. But I don't know if that's, that's how they work. So I have no idea, man. I don't even begin to try to understand what they're doing. But I know somebody yeah. you could ask. Right. That? Now, I, I know Matt Different. Buckmaster, uh, who where that comment was up, um, that movie Roma is supposed to be really, really good Atmos wise. He says there's director's intent or artist's intent all over that Atmos mix. I have it. I haven't watched it because it's in another language. Someone's was like, oh, crap, I got to read. Um, so I didn't I didn't watch. I started it, but I didn't watch it. But I hear that's supposed to be like one of the best Atmos mixes out there. Um, and it's a standard Blu-ray. So it's foreign film called Roma. So if you guys yeah. know about it and talk about it. Did you show FOMO's super chat? Huh? No. Yeah. He wants thanks, uh, FOMO for the super chat. Uh, I want to feel total Oro 3D immersion when the toilet flushes down to 12 hertz. Water spinning all around. <laughs> <laughs> oh, thanks, bro. FOMO. Hilarious.